What's up fam, it's Wilson, also known as Design by Will, and in today's video we're going to be utilizing, how, we're going to be learning how to utilize the Apparel Tech Pack um, version 1. Um, essentially the first thing you guys are going to get is a download and it's going to be this zip file here and just double click that and un oh, sorry, and unzip the zip file and in that you'll get a PDF, a 300 PPI or it should be titled PNG. And also, finally, the Apparel Tech Pack for Illustrator, so a debt .ai file. And essentially, we're going to be using those two um, .ia file and also the PDF file for this. And I strongly recommend all you guys get Illustrator before getting this pack. Like, this pack is not meant for Photoshop. And the reason being is this is just the industry standard when it comes to design. Um, and essentially, it just speeds up the time process of communicating your designs to your manufacturer. Also, it's just a lot quicker than Photoshop. Photoshop just takes forever. So we're just going to open up this pack real quick. Once we have that open, um, we're going to make a new file, A4 landscape. And I'm just going to tell you my mockups for my brand. And the first thing we're going to go over in today's tutorial is copying and pasting slash separating the individual mockups. Now, I was getting this question a lot, and this is very simple to do. All you literally have to do is just highlight everything, press Command C, and then go to your new um, document and press Command V, and you've copied and pasted it. Now, that's all you have to do. Um, and essentially you can do this for any of them. Same thing. I realized that Illustrator doesn't have a right click copy and paste. And I've been using command C command V my whole life that I did not notice that. So for everybody I've been telling in the comments, just right click command C command V. I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah, all you have to do, all you have to do is press command C command V on Mac and whatever copy and paste is on windows is exactly the same. Now there is a, another way of doing it. If you don't want to have a look around the whole document, just select whatever tech pack or mock-up that you want. And for this varsity, um, jacket and press command C, I guess press that little circle. That little circle means it's highlighted and then command V into the new document and it'll copy it straight into the document for you guys. Now there is another way of doing this is just right clicking in the PDF, whichever mockup that you want and opening with illustrator. And I don't recommend this because this is a little bit more complicated, but essentially you have your mockup straight off the bat, um, in, um, Illustrator without having to go into that big file. It's not even a big file. Um, and I, I would say this takes a little bit much more time. So essentially you have to go in and isolate a clipping mask because for instance, PDF just a, cr creates a, a clipping mask of everything and you have to isolate that clipping mask or you can double click it or double click the design twice and it will isolate a clipping mask for you. Um, and if you see those little bars at the top, it says the layers and then the clipping mask. That's essentially where you want to be. So once you've selected the design, for uh, instance, the top and the bottom, so the color and the line art, just copy that and then um, paste that away from the actual design and it will separate for you. Like I said before, this is an easy way of finding the mock-up, but it's not an easier way of actually separating the line and the actual color layer. So I wouldn't recommend this for beginners. I would just recommend going into the actual AI file and pressing Command-C, Command-V because that is a hundred times more easier for you guys. Um, and yeah, that's why I would recommend just getting Illustrator. Don't even bother, just get Illustrator. And you can move around without having any issues and um, scaling issues because all these shapes are expanded. There is a downside and a positive expanded because you can't really play with it, uh, the lines, but it's positive for beginners because one, the files are much smaller and easier to handle. And two, you don't have scaling issues for people who don't know their way around Illustrator. Now we got that down pat, we're just gonna be talking about colors um, and also how to build some color separations within the design. Um, and the way we're going to be doing that is we're going to be using a shape builder tool and also just um, using the direct selection tool. So that's how you change colors. Now for changing colors, you don't have to ungroup everything. 
I would recommend using this direct selection tool. So that's just the white arrow that's completely filled in. It's called the direct selection tool. And what that allows you guys to do is exactly what it says. It allows you to directly select shapes even within groups so you can change them or alter them without having to ungroup everything. And this saves so much time. So don't be clicking the selection tool. So that's the one next to it. That's just an outline of an arrow um being lost but you can um select the whole design ungroup it and then use the selection tool to select different shapes but the one downside is if you move things around like that you'll have some issues um and you have to go back by pressing command z so that's why i recommend everyone use the direct selection tool while changing colors in illustrator one because it keeps everything grouped and organized and two it allows you to change colors very effectively within um very complex shapes and even clipping masks so the direct selection tool is perfect for this now i did have some issues because apparently illustrator just got rid of my swatches or i'm i'm blind i couldn't just find my swatches so i just went into the color books and grabbed some pants on to show you guys how to color stuff in um, if you're f still having issues with coloring things in So essentially all you want to do is just click something using the direct selection tool and usually you have a color panel and Just click whichever color that you want once you've selected the color uh, the, the, the panel that you want to color in um, So yeah, that's essentially how you change colors in Illustrator very straightforward using the direct selection tool click whatever thing you want to change color of each panel and then just change the color of it. Now, if you guys wanna learn how I built my own hats um, for revision, uh, make sure you check out that video because that video is very detailed on how I built a tech pack for a hat. I do a lot of measurements in that, um, but essentially once I've done that, my manufacturer said I didn't really need to do that because he could scale my designs, which was perfect. But yeah, I'm gonna be showing you guys now how to s build color separations in hats or in any of the mock-ups. So the first thing you guys wanna do is essentially just make a duplicate of whatever you're doing. Now, I do not recommend you guys build your mock-up pack within the actual pack that you guys have downloaded. Make sure it's a separate document um, and always make a duplicate of something in case you make a mistake and you want to go back. I always usually make a duplicate of my designs halfway through or I either save or make a duplicate in case something goes wrong. I can just get that one and start from there. Um, and essentially what you guys want to do with your designs in order to make a color separation. If, if Illustrator won't be annoying, for some reason my Illustrator was being buggy. Um, and when I use direct selection tool, it was just selecting everything. So essentially you want to select the whole design. Um, and you want to build a shape within those um, those layers. So just select the whole thing and then click it using the, the, the shape builder tool. And now you can direct select that and change the color of that panel. So essentially what we've done is we've built a shape within that shape. Now you guys are asking me, oh Wilson, why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do that? It's because people are already intimidated by files in Illustrator. So I wanted everything to be as seamless as possible. And I wanted to bring this video out, showing you guys how to do it. So you guys can teach yourself rather than somebody just doing everything for you. The best way to learn is by actually doing, and I, that's a strong belief of mine. So yeah, all I'm doing is just selecting the whole thing using the selection tool and then using a shape builder tool to build individual shapes within that selection and then going in with the direct selection tool like I said before to select panels and change the colors of individual panels now that's how you build color separation within this pack now when it comes to the varsity and also the trucker hats I've already um, individually built those color or shapes within the actual mock-up so you guys can go in and select like the back for instance and change the color of the back and then also change the individual color of these hems um because everyone knows that varsities tend to have those like mismatched colors for the hems or leatherman jackets what whatever you guys want to call them so yeah i've just done that for you guys so you guys can do it that way and i've also uh, made it individual shapes for all the buttons so you guys can change the colors of the buttons as well but yeah that's mainly just for the varsity and also the trucker 
um, just because they have so much individual parts and I wanted to clear that out straight away. Now, in the event that uh, you want to make a, for instance, sweatshirt that's individual colors or cut and sew sweatshirt and you want the arms to be a different color to, um, for instance, the body, it's the exact same thing. So make sure you select everything and you have your um, shape builder tool. Like I said, Illustrator is glitching for me for some reason. So grab your shape builder tool once you've selected everything and essentially just go in and build your shapes. Now, when you got a different color selected, you can see which shape you're building, which saves you a lot of time because now you have confidence in what you're doing um, in Illustrator because um, it gives you that feedback of when you change the colors. So yeah, essentially that's how you change the colors of individual panels in Illustrator, sorry, not Photoshop. I keep saying Photoshop, but yeah, in Illustrator using the direct selection tool, shape builder tool, and also the selection tool. So there's a lot of tools, but just go back to whichever step that you have. And I have timestamps in case you're lost and also just leave a comment. Someone should be able to help you in there, or I might be able to help you if I have the time to pop in and read that comment. So the next skill is how to use clipping masks in Illustrator and if they're needed essentially for your designs. Now, somebody asked me in the comments, uh, how'd you get the design to warp around the hat um, from the side profile, I believe. Um, and essentially that was just using two clipping masks. Now I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do that trick just with these socks, because it's a lot more simpler to explain it with these pairs of socks. Now, essentially we're gonna have our socks here and then we're gonna get our design. Once we have our design, we're just gonna scale it down so it fits the width of the sock roughly. Um, and then we're just gonna duplicate it by holding option and just dragging down. And that essentially creates a duplicate and then pressing command D to repeat that step or that demand. Um, and then just um, selecting everything by holding shift, grouping it and then pressing option and dragging it across to duplicate it again. Um, and yeah, now we have our designs for our sock. So we're going to build it. We're going to be building a monogram sock for our design. Uh, first thing you want to do is drop down your layers and you want to drop down into the layer where there's a color. And essentially you just want to play with this eye tool to always make sure you're on the right layer. So this is the color layer or the layer that we're essentially coloring in for our design. Or, and we're going to be using this for our clipping mask. Now, this is why. I didn't do individual shapes for all those other hats and everything before because it creates confusion once you get to this step. So essentially all I did was command C and command V to duplicate that or hold option and drag up. That's a lot easier. And um, what you want to do is you want to grab that layer that you've duplicated and you want that layer to be underneath the design. The reason why you want it to be underneath the design is because um, Illustrator builds clipping masks from the image on top. And now that's why you want that to be underneath because if the image is not on top, it won't work. It'll just come up with an error saying, hey, the shape is too complex. We can't build a clipping mask from it. And that makes no sense. So what you wanna do is select both of them using those two little circles or making a selection using the selection tool and then right clicking and make clipping mask. And essentially you've made a clipping mask of your design. And also now you also still have a layer that you can change the color with. And essentially our design doesn't have a layer background. It's just a transparent. So that's gonna be the same for most of your designs. And that's why we made a duplicate rather than just using the single to make the clipping mask because we wanna keep the other one to change the color of the design. In the event we wanna change the color of the actual garment. So yeah. That's why we make duplicates of stuff. Now we're just gonna repeat the same process with shorts and I did run into some issues where Illustrator just didn't wanna pop up with the option of allowing me to right click and um, display a clipping mask and I'll show you guys how I solved that. Um, there's two ways of solving it, the easy way or the hard way. So essentially we're doing the same steps from the sock. All we're doing is we're going down into those layers of the actual of the actual shorts um, and grabbing the layer, the color layer, that's the bottom layer, duplicating by holding option and dragging upwards, grabbing the actual design of the shorts, putting it underneath the layer that we've duplicated on top and making sure we select both of them. So bottom and top holding shift. 
um, and once you right click you might get the option of making a clipping mask or you might not like right here it's not that I don't know why it's not that maybe I selected the wrong thing but I double checked to make sure I selected the right thing and clipping mask is not there so I just go straight to help and write clipping mask and Illustrator and Photoshop are amazing because they just come up with the option straight away and then just make the clipping mask that way or you can go into actual edit or oh, sorry is it object I'm pretty sure it is object so you go to object and then at the bottom of clipping mask you press make and you can do it that way but right clicking or going into help and typing in clipping mask make help is a lot easier than doing that and you can also still change all your colors now that we got that underway we're gonna be just showing you guys an easier way of bringing a design and a mock-up together without having to use clipping mask and this is just a put on top feature like i just literally just put it on top and then group it together so we essentially have our design we just scale it down to the actual size of the mock-up so it looks reasonable how we want it it's all centered it's all nice it's all good just select everything command G and it's grouped now that's all you have to do and then just go in with the direct selection tool and select the colors of your design the only downside is you can't direct select each individual letter of this design so you can just go down into the layers and play with the actual design by changing the color of the design or maybe changing the placement whatever you guys want to do so yeah just Place the design on top and group it. That's another easy way of doing it without having to do direct selection. But it won't morph to the shape unless you use direct selection. So this is just more so for designs that are going on top. So for instance, like a t-shirt design or something like that. Now, let me just explain to you guys the limitations of the actual tech pack. So with these hoodies and the zip ups, I've expanded all the shapes and with the zip up, it doesn't look the best. It's just a communicator for your manufacturer. I did have an issue with um, somebody coming to me and we uh, ultimately resolved it on how to change the actual color of the zipper. Um, and it was just a matter of building a shape within the shape. Um, but yeah, it was just a whole headache in itself. So I might change the actual zippers in themselves to just look a little bit more cleaner. And I also didn't include the actual zip because people get custom zips and people actually like send out what exactly the zippers they want them to look like. They might get YKK zips or something like that. So yeah, I just didn't put that much effort into any of the zips whatsoever because to me, whenever I've built something with zippers, the zippers tend to be a second thought. Um, unless they're getting like customized and even then it's still a second door because you're building a whole new zip so yeah that's why everything's expanded and no you can't change the color of the zippers sadly to change the appearance of the zipper you can just create a rectangle and once you've created that rectangle go into the layers and um just change the color of whatever rectangle you have and just, just drop it underneath the line layer and then you have the appearance of a colored zipper of some sort i feel like that would be the best fix but yeah then again just wait for the next update of this tech pack obviously um when i do update i'll post a video about that and you guys can go straight into your downloads from the site and just re-download it again um so you guys can get the update of that and it'll be within the same project files but yeah i'm not going to be updating that anytime soon i'm just building a collection of things that i want to change and things that i want to add like scheme masks and something like that like i said again these um mock-ups will be updated depending on the projects that i'm working on and these are all from projects that i've worked on so that's why i build them as i go so now that we got basically everything covered we're going to be talking about how to communicate with your manufacturer once you've got to the stage of actually placing your designs onto a mock-up now all i use is just call out lines to say hey i want this to be this and hey i want this to be this um, and this is a more so i wouldn't say informal way but this is more so of an, a more efficient way of doing stuff if you're not doing cut and sew and i can't emphasize that, I, I can't emphasize that enough people always want to do the most because you see somebody like a actual fashion student and they're doing a complete cut and sew t-shirt like this t-shirt doesn't exist so they're building it from scratch that's why they're in um uh excel spreadsheet doing up numbers to make sure that the design actually fits you don't need to do that if you have a manufacturer and they have t-shirts you've ordered the sample of the t-shirt and now 
you want to just print on it unless you want to change certain things like the color for instance of the shirt or maybe the crop of the shirt even then that's not really doing too much um so yeah all you do is make a little call out and say hey i want this design screen printed or you can make a separate page and be more extra and add numbers to your design and be like number one screen print but then you do run into some complication in case like next to it it's the hoodie and it's also the same design but it's going to be embroidered so communicating with that way that seemed a little bit more scarce so just to make it more simplified i just keep it um with the call out so i just put screen print um and the next thing that i do is i have a call out for sizing not sizing i have a call out for the actual garment um and i have a call out for the sizing of the actual designs sorry um, and the way I do that is I just get the same color and build more so a um, line going down. And I would say this measurements are not real, by the way, 14 inches high. And then I just put that next to that one right there. And I make a duplicate, spin it around, drop it down here. And drop this one down here and then I usually put scale width to height or scale height to width just so it's easier for the manufacturer to do it that way in the event that you don't measure your design properly you might mess up and have one of the scales wrong and now your design is warped by accident so that's why I have scaled this to this or scale this to this just because it's easier to communicate that way and I haven't had any issues up to this part this this far with with um, printing stuff so yeah Next, you want to make a little call out and this second call out, you can either change the colors. You don't really need to change the colors for this. I usually do change the color for this call out and this call out is just talking about the fabric. So for this t-shirt, I want it to be 100% cotton and 350 GSM or that's the way the t-shirt is at itself. Sorry, that's a heavy ass t-shirt by the way. But anyway, so I would say 100 GSM, 100% cotton, um, something like that. Just talking about the fabric in itself. Um, manufacturers will often give you what they have in stock. You can get custom t-shirts, like I said before, but then you're stepping into the realm of that fashion student who's designing a piece completely from scratch. And then you find yourself in a little predicament because now you have to do a little bit more than what any tech pack can offer because that's separate to what you're doing. Use this as a building base for whatever that project would be. But yeah, this is how you communicate just to write print to garment designs um, without doing kind so. But yeah, that's it. And then you just communicate that within all the other designs. And you might wanna change something and make this um, front design puff print. You just write puff print up here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I know a lot of people make this a lot more scarier than what it is. But it wasn't until I actually went into depth of building my own brand whatsoever um, that I learned that you don't have to be doing too much, but the more information, the better. But just don't be scared. Um, for shorts, I usually do DTG printing, direct to garment, and that's where they actually print the garment or the fabric in itself with the design on there and then they cut it and then bring it together and i feel like that works best with mesh shorts rather than screen printing onto shorts once they're built like i said when i was doing my hoodies and doing the sampling for my hoodies they actually print on the garment before they sew it to, they sew it together because it's easier for them depending on which manufacturer you go with let's talk in the event that your manufacturer doesn't have um, a size chart for you. You will have to design a size chart similar to this. And this size chart usually outlines the key points of the actual garment. So this is actually manufacturing the garment. And this is when stuff gets a little bit more complicated. And this is stuff that you really won't have to do until you're later on into your design stage. And you have a higher budget to be producing stuff like this or you want to jump in straight away, jump um, building stuff from scratch. So you have to measure out the actual design and then scale it and then create a size chart of some sort. And now this is the actual size chart for Hoochie Daddy Shorts. So if you guys want to copy that um, and put that into your design, that's I don't really care, do whatever you want. But yeah, so yeah, you'll have to do this. Um, and um, it's a lot more complicated because you have a lot more calculations to do. 
So yeah, just screenshot that, um, have a look at it. There's a lot of seams and everything going on and that's actually measuring out the design and how to bring it together. So yeah, that's what you will do in the event you want to cut and sew. Let's say um, you're having some trouble with your uh, manufacturer and they don't understand you want mesh shorts um, and you want to show them a sample of fabric but without taking a photo of the actual fabric itself. Just grab a, sh a photo of some mesh or some sort. Make sure it's embedded into Illustrator so it doesn't distort once you send it out. I've had issues with that before. Scale it down and just put it next to the polyester shorts. Obviously, polyester shorts aren't 350 GSM. I don't know what I'm talking about with that one. But yeah, that's just essentially how you say, hey, I want these type of mesh shorts. Or even better, you can send them an actual photo of mesh shorts in itself and say print example or print example of what you want for your design to look like. And I feel like there's a better communicator rather than just putting a bunch of holes on a, on a pair of shorts because... You can say these are mesh shorts or you can actually show them what mesh shorts look like and that'll give them a better benchmark of what they're trying to achieve when it comes to your print. Videos are also very effective if you can send videos out to your manufacturer. You can also give them print examples. Like I use this exact print example when I sent out my design to my manufacturer for my hoodies um, with the puff print. I sent them this um, sample and just told them, Boop, up here puff print sample or example and that's it that's really all you have to do in terms of this is the quickest way to talk to your manufacturer if you maybe you're starting out um, and you don't know what you're doing so yeah I hope you guys really enjoyed this video it's a really just long breakthrough of how to use that tech pack and like I said before if you guys want to learn how to use a tech pack with hats, make sure you check out that hat video of designing um, hat and also the varsity jacket video. Um, those go into depth of um, actually just showing you how I place certain designs on the elements. And going forward, I will be using just primarily these uh, mock-ups for my design projects just so you guys get comfortable with them and seeing them on the site. I know I've been using the realistic ones, but we're moving forward. Um, into these ones because these are a better way of communicating with your manufacturer because there's less friction in between the design and the actual look of the garment. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Peace.